In this video, I'm going to talk about paragraph shading in InDesign. In my last demo, I talked about paragraph rules, and paragraph shading is done very similarly. I'm going to use this, however, instead of subtitles on a list. You can, of course, use this on anything that's a paragraph to InDesign, which again is anything in between two returns. So this text here, I made a quick sort of list, and this is on my body text style. So I'm going to start by duplicating the style. So I'm going to drag it to the new icon and I'll double click to edit it. And I'm going to edit the name to include list shading. And then I'm going to come down to paragraph shading and I'll check the box. Make sure preview is selected and you can see what's happening. So we can choose our color here. Um, we can choose our tint. We can choose our corner styles, just like on our boxes, we can choose any of these options. So just to make this different, I'm going to choose rounded. But I'm going to decrease the corner radius a bit. I'm also going to increase the offset. So this will help it contain the text rather than be very tight around it and often conflicting with the type itself. This especially if you have rounded corners of some kind. It'll get really close and not look like it fits at all. So you can, of course, unclick this chain link if you wanted different offsets for different attributes. So if I wanted a bigger top offset, it'll give me that. Notice, however, I'm just going to make this weirdly large. It doesn't affect the other type because it's just a paragraph style on this line. So if you are planning to have quite a bit of offset on this paragraph style, you need to make sure you go to indents and spacing and give this enough space before and after to accommodate that shading. You can also specify very specific parts of the type for the top edge and the bottom edge, so you can line them to your baseline. By default, they're with your A centers and D centers. So it's also relative to the font that you're using. You can also edit the width. So right now I have it set to reach across the entire column. You can also change it to text and it will basically kind of work like a highlighter. So using paragraph shading instead of drawing boxes behind text is a really powerful way to simplify your workflow and make sure that your placement of all your objects is very exact. So even if my content changes, this shading is going to stay with that item. It's not a separate shape. It's simply another thing in my paragraph styles. So I can click the alternate item and turn on that shading there. And that would be a quick way to get an alternate row shaded list just by using some paragraph shading. There's tons of other uses for it as well, but this is a great quick example to get you started.